Uh, I didn't realize that I was already at the end of that episode because the next the next one is us coming up on um, like it opens with uh, the gang running away, mm-hmm. and uh, then you get to see Katara take a drastic leap in her water bending and knock out all these dudes, uh, six six or seven dudes with some ice, just completely knock them over. I thought that was pretty cool. So they just get the same guys from Power Rangers to to come the, play the Firebenders. The uh, yeah, the putties from Power Rangers. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, you just look at them like. and they roll over. Yeah, yeah. Well, Power Rangers, you had to hit them directly in the chest. That's in case yeah. you didn't know that they're old school Power Rangers. <laughs> you know. I need to oh, go. Oh yeah, I know. I'm still crushing it. on the pink one. Oh yeah, Kimberly. Yeah, I she need was like to my first crush. No, I was a wee lad. I need to go watch the movie again. The the one with Ivan Ooze. Did you ever see that? I did see Power Rangers movies back in the day. I don't know any of them by name though, oh, or any man. of the characters like the the actors. Dog, I was like five years old. <laughs> Cut me a uh, fucking break here. <laughs> oh, that hurts. Yeah, Ivan Ooze was the villain in the first Power Rangers movie. It was um. The the reaction from the age group that it was targeting was the equivalent of like, at the time it it felt like how kids feel when, um, like the the best Disney movie comes out or like when they oh the Paw Patrol movie when Paw Patrol hit theaters, it was like that but for like uh, eight to twelve year olds it was insane the movie theater was packed. And it was awesome. I highly recommend yeah, you watch no, it. Not me though. I just well, I've already seen the movie. Well, we you got it on VHS. I mean, you don't you don't remember, so you should see it again. No, I don't remember the guy's name, actors' names. That's what I'm saying. Ivan Ooze was a villain, not an actor. Okay. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm not memorizing villains' names from Power Ranger movies when I was five. That's what I'm saying. Go watch it again. It's a good movie. <laughs> Moving on. We've got uh we've got the scarred the scarred tree spirit. I don't I don't think I really followed along too well with this. Like it felt I still can't figure out why it felt the way it did. Um I was not invested in these episodes at all. Not this one or the next one. Yeah, it was a, it was a little different. I think maybe because you didn't have quite all the context of what was going on. Like you get that in the animated series where, mm-hmm. you know, you, you see them, uh, you know, kind of walk through the forest and they go visit the town and then they realize everybody's gone and, I don't know. I just feel like there's a little bit more depth. There's also things that kind of happen in between this that get cut out. And that's kind of where you start losing your footing a little bit following the show. Yeah. If you hadn't already seen it, like this, this next slide where Aang says, but I can get them back. Like, how do we know that? I think they have like a discussion in the animated series, but like here he's just, I can get them back. Well, can you? Do, do we know that? Did we establish that somewhere? You know, it's just it. It's talking about how it felt. It didn't feel a hundred percent. If that makes sense. No, definitely. I agree with you. It, it felt off. Yeah, I don't know what they could have done better. Maybe, like you said, add more context. Uh, but back to our two favorite characters, or my two currently got a boy boy wonder and iroh i don't remember the context of this i think they were messing with Zhao or getting ready to see Zhao, just trying to hunt down hunt down the gang and uh then we get our i think this is our second uh visual of azula i'm just gonna keep going until we hit something that 
Yeah. Uh, there's the the spirit. Ang doing his spirit walk. Oh, this is funny. I I think the next slide is. Um, oh no, wait, different show. Never mind. Uh, when we do the when when we do the wheel of time and we get to where Landfear's in her getup, I have a I have a slide from an old movie that is comparing her. I don't want to spoil it, but that's what I thought this was for a second. Yeah. Uh, anyway, this is the this is that chick with like that weird animal that can paralyze you by hitting you with its tongue. Yeah, I feel like she played her part really well. Yeah, I thought she was solid. She gave off the right uh the right like blase I'm the baddest I'm the baddest in the land. Yeah. Yeah, I liked her. Uh then we got the the spirit of knowledge, I think. I thought this was done well, the owl. Yes. And I don't know if this is the first time we see them on screen, but I know that the actress that is playing May was getting like roasted all over social media, which I didn't think was fair. The the girls are extremely young in the animated series, but they look they look and are drawn and are dressed more maturely than their actual ages in the show. So like they these girls look age appropriate they look like they're 14 15 which i think is how old they are in the in the animated series yeah i mean I, i'm a hop on that train i'm a roast them uh you know <laughs> get them <laughs> no i mean i'm not gonna sit here and shit on them but but then i am uh yeah i just i don't feel like i just don't fucks with it man they they just don't hit the right note for me. Uh, I mean, you you see, it's like it's like watching Katara's character. Like, at the bare bones, is it the same thing? Yes, they share the same name. They say the same kind of things, but the delivery is off. Yes, right. I agree with you. They are they are dressed uh, very inappropriate in the show for an underage girl. Um, that is different, but even so, I feel like the demeanor of them is off. Uh, you know, like kind of how we talk about with Katara, she's a very independent and strong young girl. The actress that they get to play her feels meek at times, feels right. soft right. Uh, in her delivery. And I feel the same kind of with, with this. Like, uh, May, she's this, like, over bubbly uh personality and that just doesn't feel to, like it comes across fully in the live action um you know we just like a perfect example is the tracker the I, I forget her name but the the lady with the tracker right um she she plays her part very well she brings across that same demeanor that same attitude same mentality you can get that through her body language the way she looks the way she acts and talks you don't get that with these two right um because you've watched the animated series you know who they are and what they're supposed to be but everybody who sees this knows that this feels wrong yeah i think that's the general consensus um also i mean it, i'm not saying that anybody's going to change their mind but we were just talking about iro it could be lack of screen time true true i don't, I, I don't, don't think so with may i think with may um i think with may she's kind of in a she's kind of in a position where she's set up for failure a lot like ang ang has to compete with an animated version of himself that is overly dramatic overly bubbly you know insane expressions um you know and he's some kid actor who has to live up to that hype uh, and it's very hard to do that. Not not because he's incapable of being a good actor. It's because it's very hard to try to act as somebody who's unrealistic uh, in right. such a bubbly personality. And I feel like May has that same uh, kind of character. The you, other girl. I think you mean Ty Lee. 
Tylee. May, is May the one that's like May, depressed? May's the, the, May's the, the goth way. girl. Yeah. So May, I feel like she might be a character that needs more more screen time who can grow. Um, Tylee, though, I feel like her personality is, is hard to right she's, accurately portray she's got a i mean I'm, it's a pun but it's accurate tylee and ang have cartoon personalities like they're yeah. like you said they're almost impossible to portray live action because uh, i think they have scenes where her eyes and face like get like her eyes get really big uh when she gets close to the camera or whatever like the She's up against a, a tough, tough competition, like almost impossible. No. And she's another character, like, um, is it wasn't was she not a gymnast or like yeah. practicing yeah. acrobatics? Gymnast, so she was always flying around and, you know, yeah, this crazy character on screen. Yeah, even in uh, well, what was really tough to translate to live action would be the casual way that she did her gymnastics. So she would like do a handstand while she was talking to Azula or May. And every time she was yeah. on screen, that's partly what feels off is every time Tylee is on screen in the animated series is she's like contorted. She's doing a handstand or the splits or she's hanging off of something or she's climbing on something and she's very rarely like still and standing unless she's uh, quote unquote in trouble with Azula. So yeah, yeah I, it, I don't know. They might be able to improve it, but I think you're right. I think she's she's uh, destined to to disappoint, which sucks for her as an actress. So, yeah. Uh, Cheez It says I was disappointed by the portrayal of Katara. And there's definitely a few characters that fill off in the show. And I agree. That's that's what we've been talking about. Mm. Um, uh, let me see what's... Oh. Uh, next is... We're jump back to the spirit world. And I think uh, mm -hmm. they use this exact scene as like a flashback when we get to the Northern Water Tribe. So I just wanted to make sure and vet the episode and make sure that it was there with the symbol. How Sokka saw it so quickly, I don't know, but uh, props to him for having uh, good eyes because I had to like pause this like three or four times to get it right. Where you get to see the little symbol that he mentions when he sees UA. Yeah, I saw it. I saw it briefly, but I wouldn't have been able to pick it out. You know what I mean? Yeah, that, no, that's fair. That's fair. Um, oh, I took these screenshots because this is where the the siblings are meeting their parents in the spirit world, and I thought this was... I thought that's these fair. scenes were good. I don't remember these being um, in the animated series. They could have been, but these felt good. These felt good. I agree. Uh, yeah, I don't remember it happening in the animated series either. Yeah, Katara and her mom and then uh, Sokka, Sokka and his dad. Both of these were done really, really well, I thought. That's my opinion. Absolutely. Sorry, I got myself a little cough. Uh... I did not. I don't think I got a good shot of Ko when he's like crawling down the tunnel. But man, they did a good job on this thing. <laughs> it freaked Creepy me out. Creepy as shit. Yeah, it freaked me out. Um, and then I also don't remember this being in the animated series, but I could be wrong. But having having Gyatso here and like try to comfort Aang and then essentially lie to him and be like, yeah, I'll be here when you get back. And you can see how sad he is when Aang leaves, knowing that that's not true. I thought that was good. I, I enjoyed that. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I mean, when he got back, though, he wasn't back in the spirit world. Maybe 
if Aang was to re-enter the spirit world and he was in that house, maybe he would be there. You know what I mean? I think he checked. So like Yatso didn't truly lie to him? Did he check? I I, th I think he checked because he he like he walks okay. he walks in the house I thought and it's it's empty mm -hmm. and then he does like a flashback to what Gyatso is actually saying and realizes what happened I think I mean that, that's the impression I got I think he does go back and check the house and Gyatso's not there yeah I could I could be wrong I definitely remember him going back to the house but I thought he had woke up out of the spirit world mm. and ran back to the house in like real life um and he wasn't there but wow. I, I could be remembering that very wrong, which I have a track record of doing. <laughs> uh, I I pretty sure I might have got a screenshot of it, so we can we can check. Uh, here's my my favorite villain. I know everybody likes Ozai, but uh, Admiral Shao is is he's my one of my favorite people. Like the actor that portrays him, I think did a really good job like to me when i go back and watch the animated series this guy's voice and demeanor is going to be what i want you know for the animated series call me a criminal or whatever but uh i think this guy played an excellent admiral show yeah we uh we talked about that i do feel like he's different than the animated admiral Zhao, but even though it's different, it's still like perfect the way he does it. Yeah. It's so fitting for that role. Like he's, I feel like the live action is much more of a bureaucratic villain. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, but yeah, I mean, I we, like him. We expressed that in the last episode. Yeah, I liked him too. He's a good, proper piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh,. Then I got a screenshot of old, old Aang flying around. I had to make sure he had his little yeah. glider. Uh-oh. Uh I can't I can't talk about Aang flying without causing a ruckus. Blasphemy. Blasphemy. Seize him. Yeah, seize him. 